<laughs> well, hey y'all, happy Monday. So I've had several of you ask me about my strawberries and what I'm doing, why I have strawberries going, why their strawberry plants aren't doing anything for them right now. So I wanted to come down here in this shady space with my strawberries and chat with you a little bit about our strawberry experiences. So we, when we started our garden, um, we was the very first time that we tried to grow strawberries. And um, we did two strawberries in two different ways. The first one I'll show you right here is that we made a tower out of like two three gallon buckets. We cut the holes out. We filled it with rocks and it's supposed to be where the plants kind of drape out the sides and you just fill it from the top and it failed for us that's not really the best solution for gardeners like us here in arizona unless you've got a drip system or something that's going to continually feed a tower system like this right here then it's just not the best solution and the other thing that we did and i'll show you that is um we had ran into this roadside gardener i think he posted on facebook a little bit um, but he sold all kinds of vegetables and he really thought his dirt, th this dirt that he made was great. And he had this concept of these white bags, um, kind of like feed sack bags, and he would just cut a hole in them and plant directly into the sack. And so we got a couple of those sacks and, and all the strawberries we got were from him. But I don't, I mean, the strawberries are strawberries. I don't think it matters where you're getting them. Um, but that didn't work for us either. So we might have gotten one or two itty bitty strawberries and the birds got one or two itty bitty strawberries, but that was it. So the next year what we did is we, um, I think we either bought a plant or maybe we had a plant that survived. And so we put that in a fabric bag but it's not like one of the big bags that I have now is one of the smaller kind of maybe three gallon five gallon bags maybe even one gallon I don't know and so this is in 2018 second year so it got really really bushy but again it would just do nothing it would look like this it would make flowers it wouldn't do any type of production it just was really big and then in the spring of 2019 I decided to divide it up and so I put a couple of the plants in a salad bed that I had and I put a couple of the plants in this rectangle planter <laughs> nothing ever came of any of that so when we decided to redesign the garden this year one of the first things that was in my plan for that redesign was a dedicated strawberry bed and this bed here has not been the greatest bed for me because it gets a lot of shade now the shade that we're seeing right now is supplemented by an umbrella i have up um, but for the most part for most vegetables, um, this bed just does not get sunny enough. In the morning, there's a lot of sun that comes in um, from the east, so it gets a good, you know, soaking of sun. Um, but in the afternoon, for most plants, it doesn't get enough sun or it's too scalding of sun. So that's why I thought that this would be a perfect place for strawberries because strawberries um, for us here in Arizona are kind of one of those mythological full sun plants, meaning it's called a full sun plant, but in Arizona, that's just a myth. So when it comes to strawberries, they really want some light in the morning and they want some shade in the afternoon, shade from the Arizona sun. So that's why I knew that this would be a good place um, to, to, to have the strawberries. And then I knew I could build this simple little hoop structure that would enable me to use tool to, um, to put a cover on. It would enable me to put a plastic cover on to protect it in the winter. And it would let me put a shade cloth on once the temperatures got over 90 degrees. So that's kind of my journey to getting here. And now I, I've got for you like 10 things that are in no particular order, but my, like are my 10 best tips for growing strawberries in Arizona. Um, now, I'm going to just start out right away and tell you the reason why if you bought your strawberries in March and April, any time between March and right now, the reason why your strawberries aren't growing is really 
you just shouldn't be growing them right now it's it's unfortunate that you know even some of my favorite nurseries um a lot of the big box stores all of them were selling the heck out of strawberries in the spring and you know in any other part of the country you could probably this is probably the time that you plant strawberries but again when i think about it when i went to pick strawberries as a little girl in arkansas all those strawberry plants were already there and fully established come spring when we went through and started self-picking those plants so the thing is is that the best plant time to plant strawberries so the first thing i'll tell you is that the best time to plant strawberries in arizona is in the fall so um, and you want to be careful with how you plant them and i'll come down here and show you close in just a minute um, you don't want the crown i don't know if i'll get down here close and show you or not but the thing is is that at the bottom of the the stem here there's a crown so it's like the stems come out of a little crown of green foliage and you don't want i'll say this you don't want any roots showing and you don't want any of that green below the soil line it's got to be kind of a happy medium when you go to do that planting but when you plant in the fall um these actually were four plants that maybe they sat on the table for a week or two i probably didn't get them planted until right about the end of november and they sat on the table for a little bit and they made a couple of different runners while they were sitting over there and the reason why they did is because i was getting this bed ready because i wanted to set up a perfect environment for the for the strawberry so i'll talk to you in a minute about how i amended um, the soil and got it ready for the strawberries but i planted them in the like i said about the end of November. November is really when you should be planting them. That's probably the last cutoff for fall planting of them. When I went, there was only there was a really small selection. I was kind of late to the game. I went shopping like the weekend before Veterans Day last year and picked up these strawberries. Now, th some of these strawberries were making flowers, and I think one of them even made a strawberry. But in the fall and in the winter, we picked off all the flowers. Um, now think about that again. If you bought your strawberries right now, almost all strawberries you're supposed to pick off the flowers, the buds, and the fruits the first season that it goes through. So again, that makes no sense why they sell you strawberries right now that you can't do nothing with. It's just like a hype springtime, sounds like fun, and tricked you into buying it. Um, and then the next thing is you want to make sure that they've got a lot of room now i'm not going to say that you can't grow them in a grow bag but eventually i mean you can already see places where this plant is stretching out and moving on like i said this was four plants when we originally started out and now between runners it's turned into one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve plants okay so they're gonna need more room than just a square planter box or a a dirt bag or you know a bucket or anything like that they're gonna need some room so now you can get some bigger fabric grow bags you could make yourself a square bed um, you could do them in a kiddie pool that would probably be a simple simple solution if you don't have a permanent structure for um, you know to dedicate to strawberries and with room I would also say they don't like to share space with weeds and typically this stays covered up so it doesn't really get any weeds in it but if your strawberries are in a place that will get weeds you got to stay on top of weeding your strawberries and and mulching might help you with that a little bit the third thing i would say so that was one plant them in the fall two give them some room Three, the third thing I would say is don't overwater them. Um, we, have, throughout the winter, these got watered about once a week, and now they get watered about twice a week, sometimes a little bit more than that. This bed has always been different than all the other beds um, in terms of um, drainage. All the other beds have always had bottoms on it, and this one just has some weed cloth on the bottom that opens up to the dirt, you know, that, that separates it from the dirt that is below it. So don't overwater them um let the ground dry out around them again this is why i think everybody in arizona needs a moisture meter and then in the winter 
you really want to be mindful of the nights that we're getting under the 40 degree temperature and keep them covered so if you look back on some of my videos i think i've got like a four mil maybe a five mil plastic that i put over the plants during the winter and really just on the nights that it's supposed to be really cold strawberries happy zone is between like 50 and 70 degrees that's where it really wants to make magic and make beautiful flowers and berries outside of that is when it's doing vegetation and that means it's growing bigger it's growing wider and it's sending out runners um then the next thing is in the spring you want to find a way to protect it from the birds and that's what this tool is about so i've also seen where some people paint you know for a fun little craft they paint rocks red and then they put them around their strawberry plants to kind of train the birds that what they see as red is not really good to them i <laughs> it sounds like a cute idea but and i've tricked birds like that before with tomatoes um not with rocks but christmas ornaments but the tool has been a really good friend to us we just have kept it um, encased in that not only does it keep the birds out but it's also kept a lot of bugs out moths um, roly polies all the little things that normally would be bothering the strawberries have been kind of kept out from keeping that tool co cover on there <clears throat> now as far as soil goes um, there's two things there's one the soil ph they're pretty picky they like their ph to be between like a 5.0 and like a 7.5 and this bed when we first started working on it was very alkaline so what we did to offset that and bring it down into a ph range that the strawberries would like is that we first we added blood mill about a tablespoon per foot we mixed that in moistened soil and then we brought in manure or you could use compost or you could use worm castings and then we topped it off with peat moss. So all that organic matter worked together to create an environment that is is happier for strawberries than I've ever had. Um, so I think that for a lot of us that might be an issue an issue that we're having is that your your strawberries are growing in the wrong kind of soil. They really like a sandy loamy soil that's really fertile with organic matter. So that was number seven um, was the plenty of organic matter and then I would say that once you start to see flowers producing then your plants need to be fertilized at least once a week or every um, seven to ten days or so start feeding them and as I've mentioned before we mostly just use the fish fertilizer and that keeps them happy I'm not an expert so you can pick what you like um, and then number nine is I kind of talked about this in the beginning is the thing about the shade you want to find a place where they're going to get afternoon shade and you probably even want to supplement it so right now if i wasn't here with my umbrella then these would kind of be in a little bit of dapple shade in a couple of hours as the the sun coming into its spot in the west is going to be beating on this bed that's what i don't know if you can see there's a leaf down here that last week got outside of the shade cloth and it got sunburned pretty good so even if you have a shady spot if those plants are gonna get afternoon sun at all like sun afternoon after lunchtime then i definitely recommend at least 40 percent shade cloth or better to protect them now <clears throat> In the very beginning, we had the big, big, juicy, very sweet strawberries coming from the Albinian over there. And the Camarosas are producing, but now that the heat is here, we're seeing, um, you know, much smaller strawberries come from the plant. Um, so right now, we're happy to have strawberries, but more importantly, our game is protection because our ever-bearing strawberries are going to make strawberries a second time for us this year. Um, wish we had more of those um, whereas our camarosas are June bearing which just means they're gonna produce about one time in or about June you know and then the the tenth thing that I would say is 
keep tucking your runners in you know and and the runners but the runners are just like long little pieces that come off the plant sometimes they look like a stick sometimes they look like a vine and they have what's called a little daughter plant on there and it, you'll see a couple of leaves and what looks a little bit like little nubs on the bottom and those nubs are just roots waiting to touch dirt so if you keep those in contact with soil for a couple of days and keep that soil wet then boom you'll get another strawberry plant going so those are my 10 in no particular order nothing special about their order at all but those are my 10 tips for growing strawberries so if you've got strawberries in your yard right now get them into a shady space get them covered up make sure that they stay um, with plenty of moisture but that they're not over watered and then hopefully this fall you can get yourself some strawberries and if not then this fall start yourself some strawberries so next spring you have plenty of strawberries for all your little delightful treats that you want to make and um, maybe some jams too so I hope this video about strawberries in Arizona was helpful for you I'm sure it's disappointing if you did just recently buy them and now you might not get any um, but everything in the garden takes a little bit of time so if you'll hang in there with those strawberries they'll produce for you they just need some time so I hope this was helpful I hope you have a great day and we'll look forward to checking in with you next time